good wishes to all of you our class 1 chapter 11 buildings paintings and books martha swami martha swami and the iron pillar martha swami was so excited his brother had propelled his wheelchair along the dusty stony path past the towering kutub minar and at the metal ramp it had been tough but now he was here in front of the famous iron pillar it was an unforgettable experience metallurgy ancient indian metallurgist made major cont- contributions to the metallurgical history of the world archaeological excavations have shown that the harappans were master craftsmen and had knowledge of copper metallurgy they even manufactured bronze by mixing copper and tin while the harappans belonged to the bronze their successors belonged to the iron age india produced highly advanced type of iron forged iron brought iron and cast iron the iron pillar the iron pillar at mehrauli delhi is a remarkable example of the skill of indian craft persons it is made of iron 7.2 meters high and weighs over 3 tons it was made about 1500 years ago we know the date because there is an inscription on the pillar mentioning a ruler named chandra who probably belonged to the gupta dynasty chapter 11 what is amazing is the fact that the pillar has not rusted in all these years buildings in bricks and stone the skills of our craft persons are also apparent in the buildings that have survived such as stupas the word stupa meaning a mound while there are several kinds of stupas round and tall big and small these have certain common features generally there is a small box placed at the center or heart of the stupa this may contain bodily remains such as teeth bone or ashes of the buddha or his followers or things they used as well as precious stones and coins this box known as the relic cassette was covered with earth later a layer of mud brick or baker brick was added on top and then the dome like structure was sometimes covered with uh, carved stone slabs often a path known as the pradikshina patha was laid around the stupa this was surrounded with railings entrance to the path was through gateway devotee walked around the stupa in a clockwise direction as a mark of devotion both railings and gateways were often decorated with sculpture find amravati on map 7 page 113 this was a place where a magnificent stupa once existed many of the stone carvings for decorating the stupa were made about 2000 years ago other buildings were hollowed out of rock to make artificial caves some of these were very elaborately decorated with sculptures and painted walls some of the earliest hindu temples were also built at this time deities such as vishnu shiva and durga were worshiped in these shrines the most important part of the temple was the room known as the garbhagriha where the image of the chief deity was placed it was here that priests performed religious rituals and devotees offered worship to the deity look at the images top the great stupa at sanchi madhya pradesh stupas like this one were built over several centuries while the brick mound probably date to the time of ashoka chapter 8 the railings and gateways were added during the time of later rulers left sculpture from amravati look at the picture and describe what you see look at the images top and early temple at betragon uttar pradesh this was built about 1500 years ago and was made of baked brick and stones stone top right monolithic temples at mahabalipuram each of these were carved out of a huge single piece of stone that is why they are known as monoliths while bricks club uh, structures are built up by adding layers of bricks from the bottom upwards in this case the stone cutters had to work from top 
downwards. Lish the problem that stone cutters may have faced. Write the Durga temple at Aihole, built about 1400 years ago. Often as at uh, Betragon, a tower known as the Shikara, Shikra was built on top of the Garbhagriha to mark this out as a sacred place. Building Shikaras uh, required careful planning. Most temples also had a space known as the Mandapa. It was the hall where people could assemble. Find Mahabalipuram and Aihole on map 7, page 113. Some of the finest stone temples were built in these towns. Some of these are shown here. How were stupas and temple, temples built? There were several stages in building a stupa or a temple. Usually kings or queens decided to build these, at, these as it was an expensive affair. First, good quality stone had to be found, quarried and uh, transported to the place that was often carefully chosen for the new building. Here these rough blocks of stone had to be shaped and carved into pillars and panels for walls, floors and ceilings and then these had to be placed in precisely the right position. Look at the images. Left, a Zaina monastery from Orissa. This two storied building was carved out of the rock surface. Notice the entrance to the rooms. Jaina monks lived and meditated in these rooms. In what ways is the cave shown here different from the exploration on page 15? Below, a sculpture from the National Museum, New Delhi. Can you see how some of the caves may have been hollowed out? Okay. Kings and queens probably spent money from their treasury to pay the craft persons who worked to build these splendid structures. Besides, when devotees came to visit the temple or the stupa, they often brought gifts which were used to decorate the buildings. For example, an association of Ivory workers paid for one of the beautiful gateways at Sanchi. Among us, the others who paid for decorations were merchants, farmers, garland makers, perfumers, smiths, and hundreds of men and women who were known by their names, which were inscribed on pillars, railings, and walls. So when you get a chance to visit any of these buildings, remember how several hundreds of people probably worked to construct and decorate them. Make a diagram like the one on page 88, chapter 9, to show the stages in the building of a temple or stupa. Look at the images, paintings from Ajanta. Describe what you see in each of these paintings. Painting. Find Ajanta on map 7, page 113. This is a place where several caves were hollowed out of the hills over centuries. Most of these were monasteries for Buddhist monks and some of them were decorated with paintings. Here are some examples as the caves are dark inside. Most of these paintings were done in the light of torches. The colors which are vivid even after 1500 years were made of plants and minerals. The artists who created these splendid works for works of art remain unknown. The world of books. Some of the best known epics were written during this period. Epics are grand long compositions about heroic men and women and include stories about gods. A famous Tamil epic, the Shilpati Karam, was composed by a poet named Ilangu around 1800 years ago. It is the story of a merchant named Kovalan who lived in Puhar and fell in love with, fell in love with him, Katrisin named Madhavi, neglecting his wife Kannagi. Later, he and Kandagi left Puhar and went to Madurai, where he was wrongly accused of theft by the court jewelry of the Pandya king. The king sentenced Kovalan to death. Kandagi, who still loved him, was full of grief and anger at this injustice and destroyed the entire city of Madurai. A description from the Shilpadikaram. Here is how the poet describes Kandagi's grief. O witness of my grief, you cannot console me. Is it right that you were body fairer than pure gold lies unwashed here in the dust it is just that in the red glow of the twilight 
your handsome chest framed with a flower wreath lies thrown down on the bare earth while i remain alone helpless and abandoned to despair is there no god is there no god in this country can there be a god in a land where the sword of the kings is used for the murder of innocent strangers is there no god no god another tamil epic the money maker i was composed by satnar around 1400 years ago this describes the story of the doctor of kovalan and madavi these beautiful composition were lost to scholars for many centuries till their manuscripts were rediscovered about a hundred years ago other writers such as kalidasa about whom you will read in chapter 11 wrote in sanskrit wrote in sanskrit a verse from the megaduta here is a verse from kalidasa's best known poem the megaduta in which a man on cloud is imagined to be a messenger between lovers who are separated from one another see how the poet describes the breeze that will carry the cloud northwards a cool breeze delightful as it it is touched with the fragrance of the earth swollen by your showers inhaled deeply by elephants and causing the wild figs to repent will blow gently as you go do you think kalidasa can be described as a lover of nature recording and preserving old stories a number of hindu religious stories that were in circulation earlier were written down around the same time these include the puranas purana literally mean old the puranas contain stories about gods and goddesses such as vishnu shiva durga or parvati they also contain details on how they were to be worshipped besides there are accounts about the creations of the world and about kings the puranas were written the in simple sanskrit verse and were meant to be heard by everybody including women and shudras who were not allowed to study the vedas they were probably recited in temples by priests and people came to listen to them two sanskrit epics the mahabharata and ramayana had been popular for a very long time some of you may be familiar with these stories the mahabharata is about a war fought between the kauravas and pandavas who were cousins this was a war to gain control of the throne of the kurus and their capital hastinapura the story itself was an old one but was written down in the form in which we know it today about 1500 years ago both the puranas and the mahabharata are supposed to have been complied by vyasa the bhagavad gita about which you learnt in chapter 10 was also included in the mahabharata the ramayana is about rama a prince of kosala who was sent into exile his wife sita was abducted by the king of lanka named ravana and rama had to fight a battle to get her back he won and returned to ayodhya the capital of kosala after his victory like the mahabharata this was an old story that was now written down valmiki is recognized as the author of the sanskrit ramayana there are several versions many of which are performed of the mahabharata and the ramayana popular among us people in different parts of the subcontinent find out about your versions in your state stories told by ordinary people ordinary people also told stories composed poems and songs sang danced and performed plays some of these are preserved in collections of stories such as the jatakas and the panchatantra which were written down around this time stories from the jatakas were often shown on the railings of stupas and in paintings in places such as azanta here is one such story the story of the monkey king once upon a time there was a great monkey king who lived on the banks of the ganga in the himalayas with 80000 followers they fed on the fruit of a special mango tree which were very sweet such exquisite exquisite mangoes did not grow on the plains one day a ripe mango fell into the river and floated all the way to varanasi there the king of the city who was bathing in the river found it and was amazed when he tasted it 
he asked the foresters of his kingdom whether they could find the tree for him and they led him all the way to the himalayas there the king and his his uh, quarters had their fill of mangoes at night the king discovered that the mangoes were also feasting on the fruit and decided to kill them however the king of the monkeys worked out a plan to save his followers he broke off branches of the mango trees and tied them to form a bridge across the river and held on to one end till all his followers crossed over exhausted with the effort he fell down and lay dying the human king saw what had happened and tried unsuccessfully to revive the monkey when he died the king mourned his death and paid him full respect the story is shown on a piece of sculpture found from a stupa at bharat in center central india bharat in central india can you identify which parts of the story are shown in this sculpture why do you think these words these were chosen written books on science this was also the time when aryabhata a mathematician and astronomer wrote a book in sanskrit known as the aryabhatiyam he stated that day and night were caused by the rotation of the earth on its axis even though it seems as if the sun is rising and setting every day he developed a scientific explanation for eclipses as well he found he also found a way of calculating the circumference of a circle which is nearly as accurate as the formula we use today varaha mihra brahma gupta and bhaskara charya were some other mathematicians and astronomers who made several discoveries try and find out more about them keywords stupa temple painting epic story purana science mathematics science mathematics zero while numbers had been used earlier mathematicians in india now invented a special symbol for zero the system of counting was adapted by the arabs and then spread to europe it continues to be in use throughout the world the romans used a style of counting without using zero try and find out more about it ayurveda ayurveda is a well known system of healthy health science that was developed in ancient india the two famous uh, practitioners of ayurveda in ancient india were charaka first and second centuries common era and shushruta fourth century common era charaka samhita written by charaka is a remarkable book on medicine in his treatises shushruta samhita shushruta speaks about elaborate surgical procedures elsewhere paper has become a part of our daily lives the book we read are printed on paper and we use paper for writing paper was invented in china about 1900 years ago by a man named chilon he beat plant fibers cloth rope and the bark of tree soaked these in water and then pressed dried and dried the pulp to create paper even today handmade paper is made through a sim- similar process some important dates beginning of stupa building 2300 years ago amravati 2000 years ago kalidasa 1600 years ago iron pillar temple at bitragon paintings at azanta aryabhatta 1500 years ago durga temple 1400 years ago okay paper technique the technique of making paper was a closely guarded secret for centuries it reached korea about 1400 years ago and spread to japan soon after it was known in baghdad about 1800 years ago from baghdad it spread to europe africa and other parts of asia including the subcontinent what were manuscripts in early india made out of hint see chapter 1 imagine you are sitting in a mandapa of your temple describe the scene around you let's recall question number 1 match the following stupa mount shikara tower mandapa 
place in temples where people could assemble garbhagriha place where the image of the deity is installed pradakshin pada circular path around the stupa fill in the blanks aryavatta was a great astronomer stories about gods and goddesses are found in the puranas valmiki is recognized as the author of the sanskrit ramayana abhijanan shakuntalaman mani mekla art to tamil epics let's discuss question number 3 make a list of the chapters in which you find mention of mental working what are the metals sorry question number 3 make a list of the chapters in which you find mention of metal working what are the metals object objects mentioned or shown in those chapters question number 4 read the story on page 122 in what ways is the monkey king similar to or different from the kings you read about in chapter 5 and 10 question number 5 find out more and tell a story from one of the epics let's do question number 6 list some steps that can be taken to make buildings and monuments accessible to different able people question number 7 try and list as many uses of paper as you can if you could visit any one of the places described in this chapter which would you choose and why a quick look at dates throughout the book we have used approximate dates to give you a rough idea of year when events processes took place using the year 2000 as our starting point generally the letter c which stand for the latin word circa or circa meaning approximate is used for such dates you will find dates written differently in other books that you may use for instance for the paleolithic period chapter 2 dates may be mentioned in times of million of years ago written as mya m y the beginning of farming and herding at uh, mehragar chapter 2 dates to c 6000 bc by bc before common era the harappan cities flourished between c 2700 and 1900 bc the rigveda was composed between c 1500 and 1000 bc maha janapada sans sites developed in the ganga valley and new ideas isolated with the upanishads jainism and buddhism emerged c 500 bc alexander invar- invaded the northwest c 327 to 325 bc chandragupta maurya became king 321 to 321 bc ashoka ruled between c 272 by 268 to 231 bc the composition of the sangam text c 300 bc to 300 ce the reason of kanishka c 78 200 ce the establishment of the gupta empire c 320 ce the complication of the jaina text at the council at vallabhi c 512 to 521 ce the rule of arshavardhana 606647 ce Zungzang comes to India 632 to 643 CE the rule of collocation to 609 to 642 CE in some cases for example the date from when Ashoka began to rule you may find that more than one date is shown this is because historians have not been able to agree on which is the correct date dates with question mark question marks after them indicate that these are uncertain look at the map political map of india okay the our past one book was completed thank you